My name is Paul O'Byrne and I work at McMaster University which is in Hamilton in Ontario in Canada. I want to speak about asthma exacerbations and the best way to reduce their risk to patients with persistent asthma. Asthma exacerbations are a time of great risk to patients with asthma as that is the time when patients are suffering the greatest morbidity from the disease or at the greatest risk of a severe untoward event and it's also the time of greatest stress to patients and their family as well as the time of greatest economic effect both on the patient and on the healthcare system because of patients having to miss work or school and having patients managed often in an in-hospital setting. It's for these reasons that the GINA guideline, newly revised this year, as well as all other asthma management guidelines, focus on reducing severe risk of exacerbations as a very important component of a management plan for patients with asthma. We know a lot about the ways to reduce risk of exacerbations in patients with asthma and of the treatments that we have available by far the most effective are inhaled corticosteroids. Even low doses will reduce asthma exacerbation risk in patients by at least 50 percent. There are however patients who are taking their inhaled steroids but still have exacerbations and the evidence is now very compelling that adding an inhaled long-acting beta-2 agonist to the inhaled steroids and having these delivered from a single inhaler further reduces exacerbation risk in patients by about another 50 percent on top of the effect of inhaled steroids alone. And so the combination of ICS and lava treatment not only improves asthma symptoms, but also has this great benefit in reducing exacerbation risk. In patients who are requiring combination treatment with ICS and LAVAs, it is also possible to get a further benefit in reducing risk of exacerbations when a combination that has an ICS plus formoterol as the LAVA is used both as a maintenance treatment and a rescue treatment. And in patients who are prone to exacerbations or who have had exacerbations in the previous year, this benefit of treating with the ICS lab combination as maintenance and rescue is now also recognized as being useful in the new iteration of the GINA asthma management guideline. Now, even with these effective treatments, there are still some patients, perhaps 5 or 10 percent of all patients with asthma, who are still poorly controlled. And the more poorly controlled asthma is, the greater the risk of a severe exacerbation is. And so, treatments that we would add to ics LABA should also have some benefit at reducing exacerbation risk. And this has been demonstrated, for example, for oral corticosteroids in patients who have persisting airway eosinophilia. It's also been demonstrated for the use of the anti-IgE monoclonal antibody omalizumab. And there is even data in children that adding Montelukast can have a small but clinically useful benefit in reducing uh, risk of severe asthma exacerbations. It will also be very important for all therapies that are being developed as new treatments for severe asthma, not well managed with current therapies, that they do have this additional benefit in reducing this risk to patients. All in all, the treatments that we have are extremely effective. And for those small group of patients not well managed on current therapy, there are additional treatment options that will have benefit in reducing risk to patients.